This is part 66 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss error handling in Angular. When we use the HTTP client to call a server-side service, errors may occur. When they do occur, we want to handle these errors. When an Angular component needs data, there are usually these three players, the component itself, the client-side Angular service, and the server-side service. The component calls the Angular service, the Angular service calls the server-side service. If all goes well, the server-side service provides the data to the Angular service and the Angular service in turn provides that data to the component. The component then displays that data to the end user. Sometimes things may go wrong and errors may occur. When they do occur, the first question that usually comes to our mind is should we handle the Angular service related errors within the Angular service itself or in the component that consumes this Angular service? According to Angular style guide, Error inspection, interpretation, and resolution is something that we want to do in the Angular service and not in the component. So within our Angular employee service, let's include a private method. I'm going to name it handle error. Now notice in this get employees method, we are using the HTTP client service to issue a get request to the server side service. There are two types of errors that can occur here. The server may reject the request, returning an HTTP response with a status code such as 404 for not found or 500 for internal server error. These are error responses. Something could go wrong on the client side as well, such as a network error that prevents the request from completing successfully or an exception thrown in an RxJS operator. These errors, that is the client side errors, produce JavaScript error event objects. Now the important point to keep in mind is this HTTP client service is able to handle both type of errors that is the server error responses as well as the client side error events. There's actually a common type that can wrap both these errors and that type is HTTP error response. So our handle error method is going to receive a parameter. Let's name the parameter error response. And the type for this is HTTP error response. Notice the import statement on line number 7. Just like HTTP client, this HTTP error response type is also imported from the same package, Angular common HTTP. Now one thing that we typically do in an error handler like this is distinguish between a server error response and client side error event. And the way we do that is like this. Notice the incoming HTTP error response object has got error property. So if the error that has occurred is an instance of error event, then we know it's either a client side or network error. So we will log it as such. Let's include a string that specifies that this is a client side error. And then log the actual error object. This error object has got several properties, but to keep it simple, let's log just the message property. On the other hand, if the error object is not an instance of error event, then we know a server-side error has occurred. So in this case, let's log the entire error response. In our case here, we are logging the errors to the browser console. In a real-world application, we may log these errors to a database table or a file system. In addition to handling and logging the error, we also want to return a user-friendly error from the service. So any component that consumes this service can display that user-friendly error message to the end user. For that, let's return an error observable. And with the error observable, this is the generic message that we want to return. There is a problem with the service. We are notified and working on it. Please try again later. At this point, we have our error handler method complete, but this is not wired yet with the HTTP GET request that's being issued. Depending on the version of RxJS that you're using in your Angular project, there are two ways we can do this. One way is by chaining the catch operator. And then to this catch operator, we pass our error handler method, which is handle 
error. We don't have the sketch operator imported yet. So let's go ahead and import it. Now the other way to wire up the error handler method is by using the new pipeable operators introduced in RxJS version 5.5. We'll discuss that approach in just a bit. But before that, our employee API service is not running. So let's start that by using Visual Studio Code integrated terminal. Now let's navigate to the list route. Everything is working fine. So we see the list of employees as expected. Now let's introduce a deliberate error. Let's change the URI here to employees1. We don't have such a URI. So notice the page doesn't display any data. And within the console tab, look at this error, server side error, and we have the entire HTTP error response object. And this is coming from our error handler method. And this is the line which is logging that to the browser console. Server side error and this error response is HTTP error response object. And if we take a look at that HTTP error response object, notice we are getting a status code of 404, which means the URL that we are looking for is not found. And if we scroll down a bit, we also have our error observable that we are returning. So here we are returning the error observable with a friendly error message that we want to display to the end user. Notice that error message is logged right here. With RxJS 5.5, we have new operators called pipeable operators. These operators are more efficient. They're also called lettable operators. Prior to RxJS 5.5, we only had patch operators. An example to this patch operator is this catch operator that we are chaining on to the get method. These patch operators have several problems and the new pipeable operators introduced in RxJS 5.5 have several benefits over the old patch operators. So to read the problems of patch operators and to understand the benefits of the new pipeable operators, visit this URL right here. I'll have this link available in the description of this video and on my blog. So instead of using this old patch operator catch, let's use its corresponding pipeable operator which is catch error. First, let's import catch error from RxJS. The way we import pipeable operators is also different. Within curly braces, we specify what we want to import. We want to import catch error. And all these pipeable operators are present in RxJS operators. Now, if you know you are only going to need this one catch error operator, then you may also include catch error like this. But in most Angular applications, you may need more than one pipeable operator. In that case, you omit the specific operator, in this case catch error, and include just rxjs for slash operators. And then within the curly braces, you specify all the operators that you want to import. Let's say we also want to import map, we include map operator like that. In our case, we only need catch error operator. So let's remove it. Notice how this import statement is different from importing a patch operator. Now let's use this pipeable operator. To use a pipeable operator, we use the pipe method. And then to that, we pass our pipeable operator, which is catch error. And then obviously to this catch error method, we want to pass our error handler method, which in this case is handle error. Now, if you have more than one pipeable operator, you simply include a comma and then include the other pipeable operator. For example, if you want to also specify map, you can specify that method right here. But in our case, we only have one method, which is catch error. Notice we have the exact same behavior as before. We have our server side error with HTTP error response object. And we also have our error observable with the user friendly error message. Now what we want to do is from our list employees component that is consuming this get employees method to handle this error observable and display this user friendly error message in a label. Now if you look at our get employees method in this employee service, this method is not directly consumed 
by our list employees component. Instead, in between, we have a resolver service. So if we find all the references, notice our resolver service is actually calling the get employees method. And then this resolver service is providing the list of employees data to the list route. So if we take a look at our app module file, notice to the list route, our employee list resolver service is providing the data. Now, one important point to keep in mind is if this employee list resolver service fails, then this list route will not be activated. That means this list employees component will not be displayed. Let's actually prove this. First, let's clear the browser console. Let's navigate to the edit route by clicking on this create link. Edit route doesn't have any problem, so its associated component displays fine. At the moment, we are on the edit route. Now let's click on the list link and navigate to the list route. Notice we've got the same errors that we got before. And because the resolver failed, notice the URL, we are still on the old edit route. The list route is not activated. So at the moment, in our application, between the list employees component and the Angular service, we also have a resolver service. So the server-side service provides the data to the Angular service. The Angular service provides the data to the resolver service, and the resolver service provides the data to the list route. The list employees component reads that data from the list route and displays the list of employees. So the challenge here is if the resolver service fails, the list route is not activated. When the list route is not activated, it also implies that the list employees component is not activated. So handling resolver errors and displaying meaningful error messages is a bit tricky. We'll discuss how to do that in our next video. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.